What's up guys, John Bird III here. We're back again for another video. In today's video, we're gonna talk about a fun way to catch a bass, and that is frog fishing. So we're gonna talk about the rod, the reel, the line size, the frogs that I use, the colors that I use and why I pick those colors. And we're just gonna talk about just my entire frog fishing setup. But before we jump right into it, I wanna go ahead and mention this. Strike King is holding a 30 day nationwide digital tournament on Fish and Chaos called the Strike King Big Bass Challenge USA. There are $60,000 worth of prizes that you can have the chance to win. Every state is divided up within a certain particular region. So you have the big three, which would be California, Florida and Texas, and then they have other different regions as well. So you definitely want to get in on this because this is a lot of fun and there are a lot of prizes that are in play right here. You can win gift cards from Losing Strike King, Dakota Lithium Batteries, a I Minkota mean, Otrex Quest, a Humminbird Helix. Like there's so much prizes that are out here. You definitely want to go ahead and jump in on this because it's a cool deal. Now, let's go ahead and jump into my setup. So the reel that I use, it's the Team Lose Super Duty. And this one right here, if you look right here, where is it? Yeah, right there, there's a flipping switch on here. And so the reason why I chose this reel, I mean, when you think frog fishing, you think heavy duty, you're gonna try to be ripping them out of the pads, those mats and stuff like that. So you need a reel that is like bulletproof. I, I guess that's the best way you can say it, like a freaking army tank. And that is why I chose the Super Duty Reel because it is made for those heavy cover, heavy duty situations. And so this flipping switch is actually a nice deal. So just, just kind of step off on the sidebar real quick. So if you like flipping, this flipping switch is amazing because it, once you turn it on, literally the only thing you do, you push the button down and then once you let the button go, it clicks right back in play. So that's actually pretty cool. So you pitch out there, you hold the button down and then you let go. And that's, I mean, that's pretty cool and I like that. So if you're ever wanting a flipping reel for like super, super, super heavy duty deal, get the one with the flipping switch, get the super duty, it's perfect. Now, just with frog fishing, I don't turn the switch on. Let's just be transparent. There's no need, cause you're making long bomb casts and stuff like that. So there's no need to having the flipping switch on. But this reel right here, 24 pounds of drag. That's crazy, right? Like a crazy, insane amount of drag. So you don't have to worry about no giant giant fish like stripping drag on this because it ain't gonna happen and to be honest we might do another video on this talking about actually like the drag on a reel and what people the concept of what people think how much drag they need versus in all actuality the real true amount of drag that they actually need. so we may jump in another video about that and i have a guy that we can probably do the video with that he's very very detailed with that stuff and he we can really talk about that so maybe that might be a video coming up in the future Put a comment down below if you want to see a video on that. But line size, 50 pound braid. For me, I don't really see a need of doing 65. 50 casts really well. And 50 is also super, super strong. So this is Strike King Contra. And I would say I done had this braid on this reel for at least a season and a half. And I still haven't changed it. I mean, it's faded a little bit, but I mean, it's top water. I'm not really too concerned about whether or not it's going to fade or not. But... I mean, it works perfect, and I mean, I ain't really no need to change in this reel or the braid. I mean, I may change the braid eventually, but as far as like overall, like, I mean, it's a great reel. I mean, there are no internal pins on the inside of this reel that you gotta turn on. So as you see, no internal pins, magnetic brake. So again, as we say, as I talked about in other videos, you set your gas pedal, you set your brakes, you ready to go. I always lock my drag down on my reel, so I ain't gotta worry about when I set the hook, it like some of the line come off because my drag is a little loose. I always just lock my drag down. That's just something that I'm comfortable with doing. And I mean, like I said, but I, let me let me mention this also. This reel is a little heavy. This is an eight ounce reel, right? So it is a little heavy, but it's a the way the way the best way I can explain it. It is a different type of heavy. It is a manageable heavy, in my opinion because like, and, and it feels very well in hand whenever you're fishing it. So it's not like one of those, like, dang, this is super heavy. I'm gonna be super, super tired. It's not really like that. It's actually balanced pretty well. And so when you put it on the rod that we're gonna talk about, it fishes very, very perfect. So since I've gone ahead and mentioned the rod, we're gonna go ahead and talk about that. So Team Lou's Signature Series, Greg Hackney Frog Rod. I mean, if you're gonna fish a frog, why not get Hackney's Frog Rod? So little backstory on this rod, 
I originally bought this rod for flipping when Luz released the Signature Series rods. That's what I bought this rod for. With me being a shorter guy, I tend to like rods somewhere between 7'2 and 7'4. And this rod right here is a 7'3 heavy fast. And in my opinion, this rod is a broomstick. And I chose this rod for flipping, but I realized I was like, this might be a little too stout for what I want to do. And so that's why I switched it and decided just to go ahead and just use it for frog fishing. Now, when I set the hook on a frog with this rod, that fish is coming up out of there. Uh, I'll tell you about a story that I was up on Lake Murray. I was way up in the swamp, not the swamp. I'm thinking about Santee. I was way up the river and there was this lay down, like it was like a lay down and there was a bunch of them laid on top of each other. So I threw the popping perch right on top of it and the fish came up out of the lay downs grabbed it went down when i set the hook the fish came straight up out of there so this rod has a lot of backbone now it has to just the right amount of tip so if you do those little roll casts and you're skipping between cypress trees if you're on santee it's perfect for that and so once you set the reel up right so you get if you're using the super duty once you set it up just right with the tip on this rod you can really put that frog in some really really tight places and that is what I like. So that's the perfect balance. And like I said, this rod right here, like if you really want to go to battle with a fish on a frog, this rod right here is legit. Now, another option that I will tell you that I've used a little bit as well that I actually used it for actually flipping, but it's another great frog rod. It's the Custom Light 72 Heavy Hollow Frog Rod. That is a great rod also. So my opinion i think the hackney rod is a little bit stouter than that rod but that rod is also a great option that you can use for frog fishing so keep that in mind if you're searching for a frog rod i mean like i said anytime i'm looking for a very technique specific rod i look for the angler that that is their wheelhouse so with hackney anything flipping heavy cover anything shallow water like that I'm leaning towards hackney, especially when it's like, like I said, heavy cover type stuff. And that is why I chose this rod because I mean, again, you're talking about shallow water fishing and heavy duty stuff. That's why I chose hackney. And once I got the rod, I mean, I, I really, really enjoy fishing with this rod. And again, you gonna have plenty of backbone to get those fish out of there. So that's the rod. We're gonna talk about the frogs now. So I have four different frogs right here. And all of these frogs, I have different scenarios, but there is one particular frog that I tend to lean to more so than all of them. And so the first frog we're gonna talk about is the popping perch. So this is the Strike King popping perch. And I really enjoy fishing this frog. This is the frog that I tend to lean towards the most. It's super soft. So as you can see, it's super, super soft. The hooks are very stout. They're super sharp. But I tend to lean towards this frog a lot because I just like a popping frog. And, and I don't know if it's just the action of it, but if you twitch your rod just right, you can make this frog pop and walk at the same time. So, you know, some people you'll see when they're fishing a popping frog, they pop and it's just like a traditional popper, pop R or a popping frog. They just make the big sploosh. But if you do this frog just right, and you work it just right, it will pop and walk at the same time. That is why I like the popping perch. This frog right here, and it casts very, very well. It's easy to skip, and you can put this thing in some places. That's why I like this frog. And when they grab this thing, like, they just want it. I don't trim them legs up on it, because you know a lot of guys, when we talk about frog fishing, they tend to want to trim the legs up. I don't trim the legs up on it. I kind of leave it as is. And that is why I like it. And one thing that I learned recently is that when this frog originally came out, Todd Castledine played a big part in the design of this frog. So I don't think you hear about that a whole, whole lot. And you may hear him mention it, you may not, but that is something the, that I found out that I thought was pretty interesting and kind of listening to his backstory on how he came up with the frog. So that's a pretty cool deal. Another option that I tend to use is the Strike King Sexy Frog. So this is just an old walking frog. I mean, that's just what it is. So you see, I trimmed the legs up super short. It's a walking frog, super soft. And this color right here, this is bone. And then this one right here, I think this is natural shad, if I'm not mistaken. But I mean, personally, let me just clear the air with this. And I think a lot of people know this, but I don't get too caught up in the color of the frog itself. 
and I'm going to tell you why. At the end of the day, the frog is sitting on top of the water. When the fish are, when this frog is walking and doing whatever he's doing, the fish are looking up. The only thing they see is the bottom. So it does not matter what the top of the frog look like. I don't care what nobody says because the fish ain't looking down on it because that means they're going to be out the water, right? So they're only looking at the bottom. So the top of the frog, in my opinion, is simply just for the fishermen to keep their eye on the frog. And so long as your bottom is white or black, or one that has like, I guess you could say maybe like a little green into it, something like a like a bullfrog looking type. I mean, that's a great option as well. So, but again, white or black, that just tends to work for me. I try to, again, as I said in my other videos, I try to keep things as simple as possible. So the walking frog, so if I'm doing some open water stuff and I, and I just wanna throw a frog, I can use the Strike King Sexy Frog. Another frog that I've got my hands on recently is the Team Mock Nation Poppin' Frog. And so it's pretty cool. This one is kind of soft too. Um, and I one thing I like about this, like the actual hole for the frog, so if it gets water in it, it's at the top. And so I don't know the exact color of this, but again, it's like a darker body. It's like the frog is actually like a smoke, smoke gray. But I mean, it's close enough to where, I mean, it's black in my opinion. And so again, the fish are looking up at it and so, I mean, and then these frogs, the color patterns in the mock frogs are pretty, pretty cool. And the hooks on these things are legit. And so these frogs are super soft and I like these as well. They cast very well. And then this is not a different frog that we haven't already talked about, but this is just another popping perch and it's black. So you see, I use black or white or maybe like a, like I said, like a, like a bullfrog type color that got a little green, a little yellow, a little white. But essentially I try to stick with black bottoms or white bottoms on my frogs and that's it and so that's my frog fishing setup you know if you frog fish frog fishing is just fun it's like brutal hook sets it's the mixture of i guess you could say combat slash super excitement when that fish just comes out of nowhere and just blows up on it and once they grab it I always now i do do this now because sometimes and especially like when we last week we talked about um like my top water walking baits and stuff like that my top water fishing like sometimes they'll blow up on it they'll miss it and so what i do is once they blow up and grab it i actually wait a second and i look to make sure my frog is gone and once i see that the frog is gone you already know what time it is I literally, as my coworkers say that I do, I give them the beans. So I just straight up and I just lean into them and they coming in the boat, point blank period. But with a frog, you can't play around with them too much. I've lost some fish on the frog and personally it was on, I knew it was on my end because I was just literally playing around with them. And I was messing with my, I was trying to let my power poles down on my boat. I don't have the foot switches. And so I had the lanyard. So I was trying to hold the fish in one hand or with the rod and play with them on there while I try to let him down with the lanyard around my neck and I lost the fish. So you kind of like, you literally you set the hook, you grind on them and you get them in. And the last thing I guess I didn't mention is gear ratio, seven, five to one. I mean, that's perfect. I, I You can go eight if you want, seven, five to one or eight. Those are the two perfect gear ratios for a frog rig. So a seven speed or eight speed. Don't do nines, don't do tens. And personally, I think a six is too slow. So seven or eight. So that's literally all you need. So that's my frog fishing setup, guys. So if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you stay tuned because of course we got more and more rod and reel arsenal type videos talking about my specific setups for techniques. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Subscribe to the channel. I'm JB3. I got to get back to living the dream. I'll catch you later. Yeah.